Welcome to Boomcast, the official podcast of Boombox.io. I'm Fabio from Noise London. And I'm Music by Lucas. And this is our special guest, Lauren C. Ray. Boombox is a collaboration tool to provide a connection point for musicians, producers, and engineers to be able to share, store, and synergize creativity. Also, this month we're doing a special giveaway. If you are one of the first 1,000 subscribers, you might just win this. We are going to be sponsoring you with up to $500 of free gear for your studio, so make sure that you click that subscribe button below and also hit the bell button so you're notified about future uploads. So today we have not one, but two very special guests. I will be, I'll be a special guest today. We're very well, special. I think you, you yeah. Yeah, we feel special. Today. I feel special. Yeah. Victoria and David Beckham. <laughs> John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. This intro is amazing. Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. I like that one. Music by Lucas and Lauren Z. Ray. Are you next? Mm. <laughs> I mean, mm. I think we're first. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the power couple position. And, you know, interviewing you both is such a pleasure because you are such an integral part of the team, but also you have your own team. Yes. Too. That's true. Lucas, mm -hmm. you started off as a music producer. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And then in... Let me check. Oh, my gosh. Yes, wow. yes, wow. yes. Wow. You did yeah, research. Yeah. You did some research. And during your music career, you've had some incredible releases, including a couple of tracks on Spinning Records and Armada. A lot of people know you for Music by Lucas. They know you for your production. But yeah. why did you start Team MBL? So actually, funny story, we started Team MBL to get my music heard in the first place. Lauren was actually the one that said you should do this YouTube channel and you should yeah. start Team MBL and you should start this group to get your music heard. Yeah, because Lucas was saying, man, you know, I, I've been creating this good music, but no one's listening to it. Like, how that can was kind of the problem, yeah. And I already knew kind of how to build a team, how to build a community online, which I know 2014 sounds like a long time ago, but at the time, really or even maybe sounds like yesterday depending on how you look at it but at the time like influencing and creating communities was relatively new but I had been going to these conferences to figure out how to do it for my own career because I was an actor in LA at the time and my agent was always telling me like you need to create a fan base so I can use that to pitch you for these auditions right. for different TV shows and so I was looking into building a YouTube channel for myself so I was going to these conferences and I was learning all about that and then Lucas was you know having that struggle about yeah. his music and I was like hey the solution is this and yeah. what was your response? Oh, I didn't want to do it. And he was anti social media, I just so had, you know. I also had no Wait, idea. He needs to know about your anti social media. Oh. Yes, what I want to know is why were you so reluctant? <laughs> right. I actually kind of, for whatever reason, took pride in the fact that I didn't have social media. So I was like, I don't have a Facebook, I don't have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I think a lot of that was just nerves because when also kind of that frustration about social media needing to be so integral and i think a lot of producers go through this but especially you know if it's not something that's your thing and you kind of look at it in a certain light of like it's something you have to do and how like oh now you have to do social media if you want to grow and stuff and i think that was the problem too is that i was like i just want to do music and i don't want to do social media but i think you don't realize at first that social media is a way for you to reach people that you wouldn't necessarily reach with that music and make a yeah. deeper connection with them than you would make if it was just the music. Because the music obviously can make a connection with people, but when you actually want to connect with the person and not, you know what I mean? Like you can go deeper with them and it's it's a deeper relationship. And he started a YouTube channel maybe for vanity reasons, it sounds like. But what happened is when we started it right away with our first videos, they got really good plays. And we also started, the community took off like almost immediately. I yeah. think there was really a need for it on YouTube. And it was so much more, it became so much more so quickly. It was yeah. amazing to be able to help people yeah. and to guide them while Lucas himself was being, you know, guided in the industry to bring them along for his journey and then all everybody to have the journey together. And it ended up being a community almost immediately. And it's funny too, because my music really wasn't all that great back then, like like quality wise. It was okay. And we all have to start yeah. somewhere. Exactly. But, and, and, and I think that a lot of artists also think that they shouldn't necessarily start their socials until their music is at a certain level. But the reality is that you're always going to be getting better. Like you said, everyone has to start somewhere. And there's always something that you can give uh, if, if that's what you want to do. If, if you want to do like teaching, for example, you don't have to do that on your videos. It can be different topics. But even with teaching, there's always something you can give. There's things you do know how to do um, that you can discuss and show. So obviously, I'm familiar with what it is. But for the viewers and the listeners at home, what is 
Team MBL. Yeah, so Team MBL is Team Music by Lucas. And basically, it's a producer community and a website where artists can go to learn how to grow as a music artist. And it has a bunch of different resources. And it has, we have Discord, website, social media. Well, like what sort of stuff on the website would we be got, like? We got, like if you need like an artist logo, if you need uh, to learn how to produce, if you need mixing and mastering, if you need, you know, for example. And you have a membership too. Yeah, there's tons of stuff on there. So it's, it's really developed. And actually, we're looking at launching a record label soon too. So there's it's it's, a, it's an entire producer community. It's very impressive. You have to go check it out. The first time I did, I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and for Team MBL, I am co-founder with Lucas. We started it together. Um, I edit and direct a lot of the content that we do, yeah. whether that was on YouTube before or Instagram yeah. that we do now. You're also um, behind the scenes on so many things. Like so many. We don't really have like titles. This person yeah. does this specifically. Like there is a little bit of that, but it's a lot of blurred lines of like just helping each other out with each other's because I have my own company as well LZR films yeah and it's just like helping each other out with each other's like best skill sets so who's who's muse <laughs> or are you each other's well because you're the videographer yeah you clearly filmed this yeah right and I've seen your style of filming yep I know this is you you're oh. filming Lucas but you're featuring her too yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. so much synergy in your relationship which is incredible who's who's muse that's a really good it's question so and because lucas and i have been together for over a decade yeah. it's like very blurred lines now i would say yeah. um of how we operate this is another thing but lauren's a documentary filmmaker and with her most recent documentary i started helping a lot more yeah. with the helping with being a second camera person yeah and i learned a lot more about how cameras work and stuff like that and then also uh started filming her more for her youtube channel because she has her lauren zero youtube channel uh and so i'm a lot more comfortable with filming now yeah so that's filming wise but in general i think the answer to your question um and see if you feel the same way but yeah. lucas and i have very similar personalities and we're very like similar in general and so we've always fed off of each other greatly with every decision we've ever made in each other's careers and the company we built together that's a good point too though because not everybody has another person that yeah. they can work with when it comes to building stuff but it's still possible like with you for example mm -hmm. you built the noise london brand i mean it's it's not that you have to have another partner right. but it is helpful i think the main thing also is just surrounding yourself by supportive people because yeah. even more than just us i think there was a lot of people that were involved in the success of team mbl for sure and we first met in amsterdam at your incredible Team MBL event where you had some incredible and very well known EDM DJs yeah. playing. Yeah. Did you make those connections through Team MBL? I mean, is that the power of Team MBL in its physical form? Absolutely. Yeah. The coolest thing about Team MBL is that it gave us something to talk about with these artists instead of just being like, hey, here's my USB. Because mm -hmm. as a music artist, you know, a lot of times there's that pressure when you're meeting another artist in person, like, how are you going to make this connection? What are you going to talk about? And a lot of times I think when you're just kind of pitching them your music, it can seem very like, you know, hey look at me you know come but with team mbl it was different it's like hey i have this thing and we can work on it together and we'd love to show you to our audience and and, and it made it so it was such a seamless introduction that that was something we could do together that was fun right that as well as like in any relationship it's nice to have it like a give and take or like you both um there's something in it for you both i guess i could say but it's not just, hey, listen to my music and make things happen for me. We were like, hey, we could also promote you. We could work with you. We'll put you out there. We'll talk about your stuff. You know, it's nice There's that way too. a lot more too. value to the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And then that, all that kind of, all that other stuff, like sharing your music is secondary to that. And it feels way more organic because then you you feel like you're hanging out with friends. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And ultimately that's how you would share mu music with your friends. You're not going to share mu music with your friend and they're going to be like, what do you want from me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But in, in that scenario that you've created or that we do try to create as much as possible, well, you know, obviously we want to encourage our you know, up-and-coming artists to go to shows and give their USB yeah. to to DJ. I, I still think that's better than the demo email face-to-face. -face. Yeah. What I suggest to people is keep turning up at those shows because yeah. they will recognize that yeah. you're there. Exactly. And we do that with like certain fans of ours. Like They become like really good friends. When we see them, it's like so exciting to see them again. And they started out as just fans who went to our DJ show in ADE like four mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think... Also, one of the biggest things is to keep in touch and to build those relationships. And if you meet anyone, whether it was just you handing them your USB or whatever, always following up with them and sending them a message. Hey, it was so nice to meet you at, you know, this show or at this thing. Um, and uh, not even necessarily following up and being like, you know, trying to pitch them something, but just staying in touch and saying it was so great to see you. And even that, like just staying in touch, I think also just engaging. And it, this has turned into a tip from us, classic. But 
to engage with their content. So if you're following them on social media, if you like leave a comment or like their stuff or share it in your story, they're gonna remember your name when they see it pop up all the time. And that's another really great way because they might just ask you if you have any music after a while. Now it's time for Out of the Box where we ask an off topic question. This isn't that off topic. Okay. But I, you know, it's just not so much about music. The UK and the US are meant to have a special relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Are we, do we have a special relationship? Well, I would say that the moment I laid eyes on you, I was like. You laid eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, one second, one second. <laughs> <laughs> We want to take this moment to say thank you for Boombox for making this collaboration possible and bringing myself, Lucas and Lauren together. We are here to bring you the best information possible on how to help you grow as a producer in both the technical side of things and the marketing. I I do have one question, which I feel that you have answered anyway, but what's the secret sauce to Hmm. your dynamic collaboration? Sriracha, for sure. We put (laughs) that on everything. It's It's really good. Everything. Um, to, to us working together, I think a lot of it has to do with consistency and also being willing to not just be like super stubborn. Yeah. I think that's that's been helpful too. Because we both, when we first started working together, it was like, we both believed our ways were the best ways because as individuals in general, I think growing up, you trust your own intuition and your instincts. So when you first are working with somebody, it's can be difficult be- yeah. because of that and it was i think that's a good point being able to take feedback because yeah. even, even when you're like for example let's say you're going on a discord and you're getting feedback from other producers i think it's really easy for you to feel like when someone gives you constructive feedback to feel you know like either angry or defensive or whatever you want to call it but i think at the end of the day everyone unless they're blatantly trying to be rude i think everyone's trying to help each other grow and to be able to give them some kind of perspective yeah i also think the secret sauce for me is and i think you would agree with this but to make it fun yeah um we took a lot of things very seriously for a really long time because we were serious about our careers we were serious about it but it created i think a lot of yeah. intensity and chaos and um we just had a lack mindset and we don't have enough time we don't have enough this and we decided to just switch that and like have fun with it um have a mindset of abundance you have yeah. so much time you have you have so many things and that has helped us a it's lot it's so too. funny how it, it when you try to hold something really tight and like be in control of it that you actually get less done you have you run into more roadblocks and when you let go and you kind of just go with the flow that things happen a lot quicker and you have a better time and you also are more creative. I think a lot of times you, when you're when you're stressed out or whatever that you block a lot of things in your mind mentally. And that's the thing is we work in a creative space. Music is a creative you know, uh, career to be working in. And if you are being stressed out, if you are, you know, you're blocking a lot of that creative juice that could be there for you to be able to um, to hold on to. And sometimes being under some sort of time pressure and constraints can be helpful. It can be helpful. But if you're under that all the time, then it yeah. doesn't really allow you to get into a flow state in the first place. Even if you're, well, this is just my opinion, but even if you're under a time restraint, if you still believe that you have an abundance of time, yeah, you right. get stuff done a lot faster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you believe that you have to be in a state of chaos to get things done, but you also don't like it, it's like you're fighting against yourself. So if you could just switch your mindset slightly to like, and that may work in the short like, run. I was but like, yeah, you can speak on this better than it me. It may work in the short run, but it leads, if you're doing that, it could easily lead to burnout. And we've seen that because now we've been in the industry for a while now. And we've seen so many artists that we know that have gone through these kind of things. And it's it's always that same, you know, super pr- high pressure, intensive deadlines. Yeah. Uh, and it leads to, yeah, to you not being able to enjoy it and to making it feel like work. Because ultimately, we're all fighting for the best product possible yeah right we're trying to create the best possible content yeah we're trying to you know bring out our, our, our authenticity and be as genuine as we can across all platforms and support one another and it's you know music by luca supporting laurens ray supporting uh team mbl supporting noise london supporting boombox yeah. and it's this incredible ecosystem which we're starting to create here yeah and even with your own career if you're not in a place like maybe we are or whatever 
you can still have an abundant mindset even if you're not getting good or you're not better and it's more fun because if you're viewing everybody as competition or you feel like you're too late to the social media game, that's still a lack mindset as if there's not enough room for you or that person's your competition, like there's only so many slots, which isn't true. There's so much opportunity to bring your unique perspective and who you are and what you have to, like either it's music or content, to bring to the, to the you know, to the table. Yeah. So no one's in competition. There's enough room for everybody at the table. And if you also choose to think that, I think that'll pave the way to, for you to do more music. Cause we notice a lot of people like, they're like, oh, I'm just a perfectionist. I can't get this done. It's like, what's the deeper meaning behind that? Are you worried? Is it coming from fear? Because fear usually is a lack mindset as well. Like if you're fearsome, if you're like fearing some, yeah. something, it's probably because you're worried that there's not enough space for you yeah. or, or you're not good enough. And, and it's just, yeah. If you take that all away, I think you can accomplish a lot more too. What I'd like to do Ooh. is I want to hear your impression of me <laughs> and I'm going to do my impression of you. Who's in, wait, but you're going to do your, your impression of who? Me or Lauren? I'm gonna think, I, I, I think I yours, might be tough. I, I think yours is going to be tough, but I, I could try. <laughs> Who yeah. wants to start? Definitely should comment. I don't know. Lucas, Rock, you do her. Oh, three. Oh. Okay. All three of us, I guess. Okay. Oops, I don't know what I was doing. You did doing. rock. Well, <laughs> she did rock. She beat that's, both of us. That's rock with loose hands. That means you stop, though. <laughs> yeah, Lauren starts. I think if you, you win, win but you, lose. you lose. Yeah. All right, who are you going to do? I think that's how you start, Lauren. <laughs> Hello, this is Fabio. <laughs> I don't say Fabio. <laughs> you say, this is Noise London. Hey, guy. It's kind, of, it's kind of up there. It's kind of up there, but I can't quite it's get the It's up there. It it's is. It's kind of like. Mm. Yeah, it's up there. It's like, hi guys, this is music by Lucas. Do the hands. That's not bad. I think one of the biggest things, though, that we've realized from building a community and also just in our careers in general is that you don't need to have a five-year plan. You don't need to know every step of everything that you're going to do because everything that you do is going to evolve and a lot of things happen randomly. All you have to know is that you want a career in music, that you want, like, for example, you said, oh, you were producing a lot more. You're not as producing as much now or, uh, you know, it's, it's basically, it's very fluid. Like, I, for example, I'm actually working on a bunch of new tracks that I'm going to be doing with our new label so I'm gonna be doing that again but your focus kind of shifts and things happen like for example I didn't know I was gonna be doing this uh, collaboration with Boombox that I was gonna get to know you I saw your videos on Instagram I didn't know that we were gonna be in the same room doing this in Nashville uh, I didn't know I was gonna have a producer community or a website like I told you I wasn't into socials at first now socials are like the thing that I preach for yeah. everyone to do so I don't think you have to know and I think you can let that pressure go and I think that's so freeing and you should just be able to follow what you're into and kind of just let yourself be flexible because flexibility also leads for you to be able to be your best self for you to be faster and quicker and be able to adjust and be able to have fun and um, open yeah. to opportunities like you miss out sometimes on opportunities if you're too closed off yeah 100 percent. and it's funny because if you'd asked me 10 years ago and i you know was doing production full-time when i started doing production full-time one i would have never told you that i wanted to be a mixing and mastering engineer right and secondly youtube channel are you kidding uh -huh. like i would have been no, no no that's not for me but now youtube channel instagram all those things and you're right you just have to go with the flow and it will feel natural and it will feel right and fighting it there's no point but what you provide i think which i think so many people can learn from and need to learn now is how to market yourself right because yeah. The production, you could be the best producer in the world yeah. in your bedroom, but if you don't know how to promote your music, whatever it is, it doesn't have to yeah. be music. If you don't know how to promote your talent, you're going to be stuck in that bedroom for the rest That's of your life. That's such a good point too. And there's no one way to do it. It can be totally unique and we're seeing everyone that has different types of introverted content, extroverted content. Some people like me, I dance in my content. You do more like speaking and more like original audio in your content. At and this they time. both work, right, exactly. And it's fluid, right? I didn't always used to do my content the way I do it, but it's like you just show, you just enjoy and evolve and go with the flow. So remember the question of the day is, if you got the $500 sponsorship for your studio, what would you buy with it? You getting headphones, you gonna get some cool, what are you gonna get for your studio, plugins? Just you, swag, you get? Get swag, you know, matching sweatsuits. <laughs> <laughs> also, you can find me on all socials at Music by Lucas. And if you're interested in seeing any of my films, I actually do and upload to YouTube every week of our travel vlogs. Um, yep. And they're incredible. They're like mini documentaries. And that's Lauren Z. Ray. And I'm Lauren Z. Ray on everything, Instagram, etc. 
And you can find me, noise underscore London, on Instagram. But we will link everything down below so it's easily accessible. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't like forget to video. subscribe. Bell button to be notified about the next upload. And that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you very soon. Peace. Bye. Bye. Lauren, cut that. Yeah. <laughs> people are people are going to comment that having Lauren in the podcast makes it way more fun. Can we get rid of Fabian Lucas? <laughs> <laughs>